Good afternoon, my sisters. Uh, let's praise the Lord for allowing us another time to come together to sit at his feet and listen to the word being shared to us through Sister White's uh, writing. Can we start with a an opening prayer before Sister, I hand over to Sister Knox? I'll, I will, I will, I'll pray for the for Sister Knox before we start. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May your kingdom come. Lord, I want to thank you that after a false start, we are here once again because you are merciful and kind and faithful that you want your children to know you and to stay close to you. And so I ask that you forgive my sins and the sins of my sisters gathered here today and those that are going to join. And I ask that you uh, invite the Holy Spirit to come and join us and he be our teacher as he speaks through your maid servant. And may he give us his hearing aids that what we can get from the message is what you intend for us to learn. And when we have received the word, Lord, please let it change our characters into your likeness. Thank you for once again your faithfulness. This is my prayer. In the precious name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Now I hand over to Sister Knox. Oh, forgive me. I think I didn't greet my sisters. Good afternoon, sisters. It's our time to listen to Sister Knox uh, to give us another um, inst installment of uh the Christ object lessons, the word of God through the eyes of Mrs. Mrs. White in, from Christ object lessons. I hand over to you, Sister Knox. Thank you, Sister Stolle. Good afternoon, everyone who is joined at this moment. Um, and everyone is at the hearing of my voice and those also who will have an opportunity to listen after on the recording. It's another week. We thank the mercies of the Lord that has kept us and brought us once more to this uh, prayer hour. We come to share and to fellowship alike and to thank God for all his mercies that he shows toward us. Yes, we do continue with um, uh, the series, Christ's Object Lessons and Our Salvation and looking at the parables of Jesus and their relevance to our salvation today. Uh, we are in part 24, and the message, uh, I mean, the, the parable that we're looking at today is the measure of forgiveness. The measure of forgiveness. I will ask you, Sister Stolle, once more to read for us is based on Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35. If you would eloquently read for us so that we just have to get um, nuggets of, of that parable, the measure of forgiveness before we get on with the lesson. Thank you. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times, Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy 
time seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon on one, to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord, the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him in a hundred pence. And he laid his hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desiredst me. Should, should thou, shouldst not thou also have had compassion? on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespass. Amen. Amen. Another parable there, uh, where they had asked Jesus, how often should we forgive one another or forgive our brothers and sisters? And as usual, Jesus gave a parable to give them a glimpse of what it means to forgive. And he gives the analogy of a king who was owed so much by that servant, a servant, one of his servants, which uh, that servant had no ability to pay back in order to pay back it would have meant him being sold into slavery not just him but with all his household and all his family and um, when he could not pay the king realizing his situation he he rather forgave him the debt he set him free that he did not owe anymore. And that king represents none other but God himself in, in, in relation to us. Let us just uh, get a, a quotation from Christ's object lessons. It says, then he showed the true, uh, the true, true ground upon which forgiveness is to be granted and the danger of cherishing an unforgiving spirit in a parable, he told of a king stealing with the officers who administered the affairs of his government. Some of these officers were in receipt of vast sums of money belonging to the state, and the king in investigated their administration of this trust. There was brought before him one man whose account showed a debt to the Lord for the immense sum of 10,000 talents. He had nothing to pay, and according to the custom, the king ordered him to be sold with all that he had, that payment might be made. But the terrified man fell at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him and forgave him his debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. 
and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy servant, or fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Now that is uh, the parable, the quotation from the parable. Let us start um, delve into what we take out of that parable that Christ gave. The fellow servant in, in, the, in the parable are the angels, of, uh, the angels of God, whose errands to and from the earth never cease and they minister for our salvation before God. Nothing we do is left unreported to God, but in preciseness equivalent to the perfection of God, everything is recorded and reported faithfully. And the king is none other than God himself. Christ sought to impress his listeners uh, to the real benefit um, and benefactor of forgiveness. And he shows the offended king making the first move to forgive. The forgiven was supposed to be softened by this and exercise the same forgiveness to his fellow men, but he didn't. And this angered the forgiving king. Forgiveness is divine, goes the old saying, but to err is human. If God does not forgive, he cannot be God. Hence, all who aspire to live um, with him throughout eternal ages must have that characteristic as one of the defining traits of their character, or they do not belong with God. The lost will be lost not because they sinned so much, but because they refused one or more virtues of God to define their characters. And forgiveness is one of them. Jesus made it a command for his disciples, for it is imperative that we forgive. Hence now we can understand the anger of that king against one of his servants for failure to forgive one who owed him. He could not acknowledge him as one of his. Hence, he throws him in prison as an eternal debtor. How dare you claim to be a Christian, yet you cannot and will not forgive your brother? I have often felt in my heart that church members who manifest unforgiving hearts must be disfellowshipped. They are a disgrace to the cause of Christ. Not that for, uh, forgiving does not mean in any way inclusiveness of sinners not willing to repent, nor does it mean being toler tolerant of evil in the body of Christ. The church must uphold a policy of zero tolerance to sin for the light we bear uh, to shine. Um, those with a right spirit within them will understand well what I mean. Many a grudge lover, propelled by pride, propelled by pride and meanness of heart, argue that how can they forgive one who has not asked for forgiveness? The question I ask them is where were you when Christ poured his life out in that cross? Had you gone to him to ask for forgiveness? While I was yet dead in my sins, Christ paid the ransom for my forgiveness. 
So all I have to do is accept it. So why not forgive your debtors meaningfully? So they, so when they see you next time, they may be able to also uh, to accept your gesture of forgiveness and repent. Many would gladly pray, forgive us as we forgive them. Yet they never stop to take in the actual meaning of the words they are uttering. And without realizing, like the unfaithful servant in the parable, they let, uh, they lock heaven's doors against themselves. Because as they ask in the prayer, God will precisely treat them just the way they treat their fellow men. Is that what we want? For God to treat us the way we treat one of those uh, we despise too unworthy of our forgiveness. As you have rendered, so it shall be rendered unto you. The lost, um, the lost will, will be lost not because God couldn't forgive them, but because they refuse to forgive their debtors. Hence, God cannot forgive them either. Repent while the door remains open, or it shall be forever too late. Um, that is what we take from the, the, the parable. And as usual, I have a poem to try and put clear my understanding of what it means uh, to forgive. And I entitled it, He Died for Me. One may scarcely die for a righteous man, but Christ died for a world engulfed in darkness. Before I knew him, he already died for me. A gesture of love unconditional. All I needed and need to do is to accept it and accept him as my substitute. Oh, what love. Love such as we can never fathom, the cross eternally remains a symbol of that unconditional love. The scars he bears in his hands, his feet and body tell of the sacrifice he made for me. Like a sheep led for slaughter in the hands of his shearers, he was mute. For if Christ had dared to open his mouth, lo and behold, no earthly monarch could have found him guilty of death, even as he kept silence. Even as he kept silence, they pronounced him innocent. The crowd, the crowd around him cried out, crucify him, crucify him. What was it then that propelled him to continue and give his life for a guilty world. He looked and he saw down the edges to come, souls that would believe the account of them that saw his demise and believe. He saw me, even I, hallelujah. Even if it will just be a few, even one person, Christ would steal and was happy to walk the rugged path to Calvary just to save a soul that believed in him. What would I render for such love? Such a priceless gift to mankind. My life I give to him without reserve. Let me daily cruci be crucified with Christ that I may live with him eternally. To live daily for me must be uh, to his honor. To die in Christ will surely be a gain for me. With Christ, I am a winner whichever way. There is no loss. Hallelujah. Um, that is the poem on the measure of forgiveness. We cannot estimate the measure of forgiveness except through the cross. As we look up on the cross, we understand what it actually means to forgive. And may God bless us. I give back to you, Sister Stolen. Amen. Amen. What a profound message. Thank you, Sister Knox.
Um, I see uh, Mrs. White has got very strong words to use there for, for lack of forgiveness for others, a disgrace to the church and of our pride and meanness of heart stopping us from uh from forgiving. And um what I taking away from from all this apart from the immense love that our Lord has shown us and that we have to look to the cross lest we forget what it is that he paid on our behalf for us to be able to be like him to forgive. And I know that a lot of the times I, I'm one who has to constantly be reminding myself that uh, it is it also the forgiveness has got two sides, asking for forgiveness, but also forgiving those that have hurt you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, what a powerful parable this is. I don't know if anyone uh, wants to, to comment. To ask questions. I just want to thank God for the timely message which Sister Nox is just uh, giving us today. This message is uh, we always know that we have to forgive even if we look at the Christ's prayer, we also include that forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. But when it comes to practical, it's a very difficult thing to do. When you are angry, with your brother or your sister, it's very difficult to forgive them. The Bible tells us not to let the sun go down with our anger. But we have found that we are we spent some weeks or months or years angry with our brothers or sisters. So I am one of them who is getting that it, who is getting it very hard to forgive. I forgive, but when someone keeps on forgiving, keeps on sinning against you, taking that advantage that you are a Christian, it makes me feel very angry. So I just want to thank God that Christ he keeps on emphasizing it to us that we must forgive no matter how many times our sisters or brothers sin against us. We have to forgive them. So I want to thank God really because we also, if we put ourselves in, in, in our brother's shoes, we are also sinning against God so many times so that we need to be forgiven. So the same applies to us. Let us have that heart, that spirit, which is in Christ, to forgive all those who sin against us. Thank you so much, Sister Knox, for reminding us this. Uh, it's a big problem in our lives. Otherwise, it will make us not enter heaven where we have been doing all things trying to be Christian, but at the end of the day, we are found ourselves lost because of not forgiving others. So I just want to thank, to pray for the Holy Spirit to help us to forgive. As soon as we remember it, let us let it go and ask God to help us to forget about it and forgive those who have sinned against us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, to forgive is it's a Christian virtue. You cannot be a Christian and yet you cannot forgive. I do not know about others, but as for me, 
if I am angry with someone, I can't pray either. That's one thing I notice. Until I have to let go in my heart, whether the person has asked for forgiveness or not, I have to resolve that I forgive them. Then I feel that the the A, the path between me and my savior is open. As long as I'm still angry with the other person, I cannot pray, which is, is a, as a reason I understand clearly that why Jesus made it a command to the disciples to forgive. We separate ourselves from our savior by holding on to grudges. And it, it, you, you, you cannot continue and claim that you are working with Christ and yet you cannot forgive someone. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I am in agreement with uh, what you say, Sister Knox, that it becomes a blockage when you want to pray. All you think of is how can they do something like you keep going back to, to that grudge that you have. And also what I'm, I'm also seeing here is forgiveness is, is not for us to wait for him to say sorry or her to say sorry. We ought to forgive even when they have not said, when they haven't sought that forgiveness. Um, and when we hold, when we hold grudges, isn't it also a matter of it? It eats up on our on our physical health. Never mind, in, in not on the spiritual life. Physically, it will start chipping away. That's why we have got all these diseases like high blood pressure and, and all the sorts of uh, of diseases that we have uh, mental issues and emotional issues is because we all don't do things. And yet Christ said to us, bring all your troubles to me and I will give you rest. But we refuse. Thank you so much. Any more comments? Yes. Indeed, uh, sister, just to add there also one thing I think is quite important. If we hold on to unfor an unforgiving spirit, we we put ourselves in the way of being deceived. The devil can so easily deceive you when you hold on to anger and still come before God to pray. If you look closely, people who hold grudges and desire to see the punishment of those that have erred against them, when they say they are praying to God, how do they pray? They think they are praying to God when they are actually praying to, de to the devil. This is where we see some uh, uh, denominations that believe in praying for fire to, their, to, to those that are their enemies. And instead of praying to God and seeking to understand the character of God and to have his virtue in their spirit, they end up expressing their anger and their desire for evil upon those that are their enemies or those that have hurt them. And that prayer is not going to God. There is someone waiting by the side to receive that prayer. And when he starts manifesting his spirit, they, they will believe that it is the fire of God. There is approval of God for their prayer when they are actually under the banner of uh, the prince of darkness it's exactly the reason why christ rebuked uh, john and james when they they asked uh, him to allow them to call upon fire from heaven to devour the samaritans who did not pay respect to christ and christ said to them you have no clue what spirit is of you in what you are saying Amen. Amen. What a sobering message. Um, any more, any more uh, comments before we close this section and move to the next one? Thank you very much, Sister Knox, for your faithfulness. Uh, let me pray to uh, for the message. Let us pray. Our most uh, gracious and faithful Father who is in heaven, thank you so much for allowing us to hear you speak to us. 
about forgiveness. Thank you for your maid servant, Lord. And thank you for the Holy Spirit who is amongst us. As you promised that where two or three are gathered in union, there you are in the midst of them. As we are going to go to the next section of our prayer meet, meeting, Lord, help us to remember to ask for the humility and the Holy Spirit to wrote that humility in us to know, to remember to forgive, lest we not be forgiven too. And thank you for Sister Knox who takes her time to come and share this next message with us. And may the Holy Spirit help us to remember all that you have taught us. Thank you for my sisters that are gathered here today. And, and bless those that are going to be hearing this message, that they too take away what we have been blessed with. And I ask that you bless Sister Knox and increase her ministry. Bless her family, bless our families too. And that the rest of us, all of us, take away this message and bring it to others so that they too may, may come to know you and to love you. This is my prayer in the precious name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. So um, we move on to the next section of our, our prayer session, which is which which is our prayers. Let me just look for. So we're gonna go into a season of prayer. We will start with um praise and thanksgiving. Uh who is going to to take that uh to pray for praise and thanksgiving? Anyone? I can take it if you don't mind the noise of the child who is making noise here. Yeah. Children are a gift from God, sis. Amen. Thank you. Um, you can read for me. I don't have the thing at the moment. Okay, so it's Psalm 103, verse 2 for you. And you. then, Sister Knox, can I ask you to do um confessions? A confession of sins. Yes. And and the and the um, the verse is Acts three verse nineteen. Okay. So, so right. And then I will do um the Holy Spirit, which is Acts and and I will use Acts two, verse um thirty eight for that. And I'll include prayer retreat ministry in my prayer, which is uh, Acts 8, verse, verse 4, the reading. Day. So the, the order of prayer is Sister Sister Dorcas for praise and thanksgiving, and then uh, Sister Knox for confession of sins, and then I'll do the Holy Spirit and prayer retreat ministry. So let's take let's um take a minute to ask our our Lord to give us the spirit of forgiveness and love to to forgive those that have that have um sinned against us and to always remember to behave a forgiving spirit lest we be judged by how we are judging others and when. You hear me say amen when we can start. Let us pray.
Amen. Uh, I read in your hearing Psalm 103, verse 2, for the prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly bow down before your throne this afternoon. We give you honor, praise, and thanks for you are worthy to be worshipped. We want to thank you, Lord, for creating us in your own image. We want to thank you, Lord, for giving us the dominion over your creation. We thank you, Lord, for everything. We want to thank you, Lord, for everything which you are doing for us. Lord, we thank you for your word, which we have just heard. We want to thank you for Jesus Christ, who came to die for us, for all our sins. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Lord, we thank you for this time, which you are still lingering waiting for us to come and worship you, to forgive others as you forgive us. We want to thank you, Lord, for your mercies, which are new every morning. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for our families, which you gave us. We want to thank you for our sisters who are gathered here to encourage each other to come and worship you. We want to thank you, Lord, for your church. We thank you, Lord, for this prayer ministry group. We thank you for our elders, for our leaders. We thank you for everything which you have in store for each and every one of us. May you continue to be with each and every one of us. May you continue to bless all those who are called by your name. Lord, we want to thank you for your Holy Spirit. For without him, we will be nothing. We want to thank you, Lord, for all our sisters and brothers who join hands together to carry each other's burdens. Lord, we want to thank you for everything which you have in plan for us, what you have promised in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. The plans for us to prosper, not to harm us. We want to thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit and for your plan of redemption. We thank you, Lord, for everything which is going to take place according to your will. We pray that, Lord, when everything is said and done, may our names be written in the book of life. We humbly pray all this in your precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I read from Acts chapter 3, verses, uh, I think you said, verse 19, sis. Hmm. Yes, it's Acts 3, verse 19. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that... Um, that your sins may be plotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal <clears throat> God, our Father who is in heaven, what a redeemer that we have in Christ. 
and what gift that heaven has given unto us so that we may be forgiven our sins. We come before the throne of grace this afternoon to confess our sins, O oh Father, especially the sin of unforgiving, unforgiving hearts and holding of grudges in, in the body of Christ. How we grieve the Holy Spirit daily by holding on, oh Father, to the sins of our brothers against us and yet come before our Heavenly Father asking him to forgive us our sins. We pray, O oh Father, this afternoon that as we have learned once more, as we search and glean from the writing, the scriptures that we give us, and we come to understand how important it is that we forgive one another. Just like that king who forgave one of his seven, how he was angry after hearing how he could not forgive one of his fellow servants. We know this is how we also appear before you when we do not forgive our brothers and sisters. Give us a new heart of Father that is like the heart of Christ, that while he was being persecuted and even dying on the cross, what his lips could utter was forgive them, for they know not what they do. It is amazing love, which only the power from the Holy Spirit can give, to be able to forgive our brothers and sisters. While we keep our eyes looking on the cross, it's only that which you can give into the heart of Father that can give us the ability we pray this afternoon asking that you forgive us for the failure to forgive. The body of Christ is littered with people who do not speak to each other, who avoid the path on which the other is walking simply because they cannot forgive one another. And the angels watching them who minister for our salvation, taking records, they are appalled, O oh Father, and the Holy Spirit is grieved in our midst. Oh, we pray, O oh Father, that you will send us your spirit who will soften, to soften your people, soften our hearts, that we may be forgiving, that we may be able also to pray and have our prayers heard. For you say we pray and we are not answered because our sins stand between us and our Savior as a blockage and even the sins of, of unforgiving hearts. We thank you this afternoon for your word that you have brought to us to remind us that it is uh, a virtue, a Christian virtue to forgive and we must sort after it that we may be approved of you. Be with each and every sister, brother, why at the hearing of my voice this afternoon, there are families behind them and also the congregations on which we worship. We stand in the care of Father and present all of us and the body of Christ worldwide. Give us the character of Christ that the world may see how we love one another and they may know that we are your children. We thank you this afternoon. Be with each and every one of us. For we pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Continuing in prayer for the Holy Spirit and the prayer retreat ministry. I read first uh, Acts 2, verse 88. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 8, verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. 
May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Our most gracious Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May your kingdom come. Father, thank you for the prayers that you have already ascended. The prayer of thanksgiving and the prayer of confession of sin, all of which I am in agreement with. Lord, if you were to give us according to our just deserts, none of us would be saved. So I want to thank you that you have made available the most precious gift of the Holy Spirit for us to teach us how to live according to how our Lord showed us when he walked this earth and to live according to what your, your word says, Lord, to help us, to remind us of all truth and righteousness and to keep us on the path of righteousness. Father, many times we forget to ask for the Holy Spirit because we are being driven, we are driven by pride, which is of the devil. And so I invite the Holy Spirit once again to come and settle in our hearts and help us to internalize the word that we have just heard as ten warning. If we do not forgive, then we cannot receive forgiveness. Thank you, Father, that you have seen it worthy for us to be here today. It was not a mistake for us to hear this message. Many of us as women, we tend to hold on to grudges, particularly the, the ones that we love the most. But, but thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who is going to stay our hearts, to rebuke us of our sins, and to give us victory over all temptation to sin. And, and therefore, I ask, Father, that he continue to stay at our hearts to search you, because you said, if you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. And this is the reason why we are here morning, afternoon, and evening. We are searching you, Lord. We want to be called the children of, of God. Because you have said, as my sister said, if they, if they, will, they will know you are my, my disciples because of how we live, we love one another. May he in, infuse in us the love of Christ, which is what drives how we live this life, how we forgive, how we view these things and allow his spirit, his fruit, to show in how we live, Father. Even if we do not open our mouths, that others still know that you dwell in us and in our homes because of we are representing you in the manner that, that shows who you are. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life in the Holy Spirit. And I want to thank you that we can still pray and ask for what we need to in liberty. And, and thank you for allowing us to be able to meet for or online as we are. I lift up this precious gift that you have given us, prayer retreat ministry, Father. You have sustained it because you have infused your Holy Spirit in it. Thank you for the men and women who work in different capacities, maintaining the physical um, platform, leading out in prayers, sharing the word, whatever capacity, I give you honor, praise, and glory. Thank you for the, for the ministries that are attached to the, to, this, to the main prayer retreat ministry. Lord, it is changing lives, and it is reaching far more than what physical churches do. And I ask, Father, that you continue through the power of the Holy Spirit to bless the ministries, this main one and, and the other ones, medical missionaries, uh, the book distribution, the children's ministries, 
and any other that I may have forgotten, Lord. Thank you for your love and for your mercy. Yes, there is the one, the, the camp meeting in Kaffinli, December. Thank you for providing for all the resources that are needed for that ministry and, and, and for the main and all the other ministries, Lord. Help all of us that have been beneficiaries to this ministry to open our hearts and give of what we have in order to continue the work so that your, our, our, our Lord, our King, may hasten his footsteps to come and take us home from this wicked world. Thank you, Father, for your love and for your mercy and for your forbearance, wishing none to be lost. Thank you for my sisters who are here. We have managed to log in, even those that couldn't make it. Bless us all and bless our families, whether they be by blood or they be because you have purposed for us to be in spirit with them. Thank you for, for this afternoon, this sweet hour of prayer. I pray in the precious name of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies, for all for the prayers. I'm going to stop recording now and then we do um uh prayer requests if there are any. Okay. Stop recording.